Hey everyone, Fritz here. And in today's video, we're back at SB Beamer. We're actually gonna be switching out the thrust arms on the M235i for SPL thrust arms. Let's get into the video. Now, if you're following along from the other video where we switched out the lower control arms, that is actually what helps us get some negative camber. Of course, if you don't wanna do camber plates, this is another option, but don't expect a whole lot from those. Now, when you're doing the thrust arms, what you're actually doing is adjusting the caster. And what that essentially means is that you're moving the wheel either forward or backward, or based off the other parts, you're getting it back to where its stock location was. And if you wanna see a video on caster versus camber, let me know in the comment section below. But today's video is just me strictly doing the thrust arm on the M235i, and the reason why is because when I was doing my research and looking into control arms to adjust for the camber, it would also push the wheel forward, so positive caster. These thrust arms, the adjustable ones, will actually allow us to get it back to stock or configure it to any configuration that we want. And that's exactly why I went to SPL parts versus going with either the M Sport control arm and the M thrust arm. The SPL parts give us a lot of adjustability. And of course, this is just my daily driver, but if I wanted to take it on the track later, this thrust arm paired with the control arm that we have now is gonna give us the eligibility to change to whatever we want in the future. There's a huge misconception, a lot of trash talk about the BMW stock parts that come on. They say this is like a hollow bushing right here. It's not necessarily hollow, it's more like liquid fill. That's what gives us the comfort of riding around. The M Sport bearings, those are really more of just of solid rubber bushings. And getting into SPL parts, we have a pure metal bushing and there is some Teflon there. So if you see that black portion around the edge, that's actually not just a shadow. That is actually the Teflon on the edge and that allows this piece to be self lubricating. This is more of the street version of SPL parts. They do have a track version as well. And so just making sure that you get the street version if this is your daily driver, that way it's a little bit more comfortable. It is a little bit harder to do when you're just on jack stands. But if your drill can get it out or if you're on a lift and you have a breaker bar for yourself, then by all means you can do this at home. But if you're like me, you can't get it out, don't let your ego get in the way, take it to the shop because when we're all set and done here, we're gonna have to do an alignment anyways. And that's something that you definitely wanna take it to the shop for. So with that said, we're gonna go ahead and get the video and install these thrust arms. So coming from the passenger side of the car, we actually have to remove this wiring harness here in order to get access to the bolt that holds in the thrust arm. So in order to do that, you just have to pop out a couple of clips here, remove this under panel over here, which will give us further access to the covering for that wiring harness. And then when you've released the wiring harness from all its connection points, go ahead and disconnect it. Just be careful because this is your power steering. And then once you have that out of the way, you can go ahead and use an 18 millimeter socket in order to break loose the bolt that holds in the thrust arm to the chassis. The driver's side is gonna be a little bit easier because you don't have to worry about this on that side. And if you're wondering what this little SPL parts piece is right here, this is actually our lower control arm that we installed earlier. If you wanna see the video on that, click the link at the top right hand corner. And as for the nut that holds in the thrust arm on the wheel well side, that's just gonna be a 21 millimeter socket. Now that all the nuts are loosened, we can go ahead and remove them. And we're out. Woo! All right, and here we go. Control arm in all of its uh, OEM glory. So for these installation guides, on SPL it says to make sure that they are the same same length. They do come different sizes, so one is shorter than the other. So make sure that when you do take out the control arm, you can see that one is extended further than the other one and make sure it matches like so. What we were saying earlier is that this portion right here is a little bit uneven and you want this smaller portion to be facing towards the outside of the car, so towards the outside of the wheel well. And then you want this longer piece over here to be facing the inside of the car towards the cabin. When you install the thrust arm, you wanna make sure that when you install it, that you install it into that knuckle 
from the top side down. And then you insert the bolt from the bottom up. Now for this portion here that attaches to the chassis of the car, we want to tighten it down to 74 foot-pounds. When we torque it down to 74 foot-pounds, that's what gives us that marking right there, which aligns to the bolt, which has a marking right there. But on top of that, he did a 90 degree point right there. So it's 74 foot-pounds, and then they want you to turn it an extra 90 degrees. So if you don't have a torque wrench that will calculate that for you, that's how you get it to the 90 degrees once you have it to the proper torque spec. Now once you do that 90 degree turn and you've torqued it down, it's not a bad idea with a different color paint pen to label the other side where the screw previous was. So that orange marking was here and we just covered it up with yellow and the two orange points line up. So this is actually an extra point of reassurance that if the bolt moves, we'll know for sure. Now once you have everything situated, you're gonna wanna grab yourself a low profile 12 millimeter Allen head in order to hold down the top, a 24 millimeter socket for the bottom, and we're gonna torque this down to 110 foot-pounds. I should also add that this wrench actually has a bend to it, so that might be very helpful for you in your install as well. Now don't forget, if you watched us from that control arm video, you can see that there's actually some paint on the lower control arm bolts and we just added some paint to the thrust arm. That's there for us to look at periodically and to make sure that this nut is not moving on us. Even though we tighten it down to spec, anything can happen, especially if you're driving hard. And once you're done with the passenger side, don't forget to hook up back the wiring harness because otherwise you won't be able to steer your car. But with that, all that you have to really do is just repeat the process on the driver's side. Undo the 18 millimeter bolt and remove it. Undo the 21 millimeter socket at the wheel well. If you need to, use a pry bar to pull out the thrust off. With that out of the way, make sure that you insert the thrust arm on the wheel well side with the wider portion of the knuckle should be facing down. Insert the nut and make sure that when you do the other portion of the thrust arm that attaches to the chassis, that the bolt will pass through the smaller portion and then through the longer portion where it's gonna be held in. So as you're passing the bolt through, you wanna make sure that you do not crush the wiring harness of your ambient temp sensor right there. Because you can see that the way that it flows, it's very easy for it to get caught up in the bolt as you thread it through. So just be very, very cautious when you're threading it through and thread in the bolt. Now here you can see that we are back to using our 12 millimeter Allen on the top with a slim profile and the angled wrench. And down here we have our torque wrench with a 24 millimeter socket. And we are going to 110 foot pounds. And just like before, the chassis portion gets torqued down to 74 foot pounds. And then don't forget to do that 90 degree extra turn before you mark up the nut so that you know it's not going anywhere. Now the cool thing about getting the thrust arms done at a shop is that this locking collar here, we're not gonna tighten it down just yet because we're gonna put it on an alignment rack, get everything into proper fitment, get all the geometry right, and then we can tighten all the lengths down properly. But before we do the alignment, we have to reattach the skid plate and the under panel, as well as the engine cooler covers. And then once we have that in, we can get the alignment done. So as Arthur finishes up putting on the under panel of the car, we are gonna throw it on an alignment rack as soon as this is all over. And then you guys are gonna wanna stay tuned and watch that video for sure, because we are gonna be doing a giveaway there. But with that said, that brings us to a close over here for our thrust arm video. And again, if you want me to do a video on why it was so important to do the thrust arm with the control arms, let me know in the comment section below. If you have any other questions, let me know as well. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.